Hello, parents and students of class of 2025. We are so happy to welcome you to Papillion La Vista South for your freshman year. Uh, normally, we like to bring parents in and do a high school information night, but this year, um, due to COVID, it will be virtual. First off, I just want to welcome everyone who is going to become a Titan next year. This includes all of our students coming from out of state, military families, students coming from parochial schools and um, homeschooling, and also to all of our students at Papillion Middle School and Liberty Middle School. We are so excited to have you here. My name is Mrs. Prusha. I am the ninth grade principal here at Papillion La Vista South, and I will also let Ms. Segu introduce herself. Hi, I'm Brenda Segu, and I am the freshman counselor. I'm so excited to meet with your students and help transition them to high school. It's gonna be a great year. So first, just a little bit of information about Papillion La Vista South. Our head principal is Mr. Jeff Spilker. He um, actually is a Papillion native. He went to Monarch High School. He did his student teaching here at Papillion La Vista South, was a math teacher and an assistant principal before becoming our head principal this year. Our assistant principal who oversees the 10th grade class is Mr. Brent Gearing. Our athletic director is Mr. Jeremy Van Akron, and we are in the process right now of hiring an assistant principal to work with the junior class. Our guidance counselors, um, your freshman year, everyone will have Ms. Segu as their guidance counselor. Ms. Segu is an awesome resource for any and everything that you might need here at Papillion La Vista South. As you transition to 10th and 12th grade, we do split up our um, students based on their last name. So Mr. Brad Richmuth, Ms. Teresa Holton, and Mr. Jim Whitcomb will be your counselors for the remainder of your high school experience. And then if you are in an academy, Ms. Renee Mead will be your counselor, um, and she's the counselor who oversees all the academies here at Papillion La Vista South. Biggest thing I want to tell you, the best piece of advice I could give any incoming freshman is to get involved. Um, we love to have our students involved. We love to see our students thrive outside of the classroom. In a traditional year, we would hold what's called Titans of Tomorrow, usually in March. And what that is, it's all of our clubs, all of our athletics, all of our activities. And the incoming freshman can really get a good idea to figure out what they have or what we have here at Papillion La Vista South for them and really find their niche. We still plan on doing Titans of tomorrow um, this spring, but we are kind of in the discussion right now if we're gonna be able to hold that here in the gym or if it's going to have to be virtual as well. So please stay tuned for more information on Titans of tomorrow. And I will let Ms. Segu kind of take hold now and talk a little bit about academic information for the freshman class. Okay, we'd like to talk about the graduation requirements. Um, when you look at these, a credit is considered when they pass an elective or pass a class, um, each semester class they pass, they earn a credit. Um, so when you look at these requirements, language arts, they will need eight credits, which is basically four years of language arts. Math, they need six credits, which is three years. Science, six semesters or three years, social studies, six social studies or three years, and physical education, they need three credits, one of those which is intro to PE, which is the required class for graduation, and then electives, we need 16 electives, and that rounds us out with 45 credits for graduation. If you look at the requirements to get into college, these are called the 16 college core requirements. You will notice they are very similar. We have aligned our credits to be right what they need to get into college. The only thing that's different is you do need two years of world language and that is of the same language. Um, yeah, and, and of course students can take more than, more than the required amounts all of those will fall into the elective category. Um, one thing that some colleges will want an additional year in one of the subjects above. Now, if you want to be a Cornhusker and want to go to UNL and Lincoln, you must have one math class above algebra two. And some of the other classes or colleges will want you to have either a fine arts or technology or another subject. 
So the way your student would learn about that is look at the different colleges that they're interested in and just look at the requirements for um, admissions and then that will help you guide what you need to take over the next couple of years. The grading scale, this should look very similar to what you had at the middle schools. Um, for an A, you have 100% to 90%. Basically, we're on a 10% or 10 point scale. And then it goes down to an F. If you get a 59% or below, you will, the, your student will be receiving an F and will not be reading, receiving credit. I do want to talk a little bit about grade point average, grade weighting. Um, we have the three different levels. We have regular classes, honor classes, and advanced placement classes. At the freshman level, we just have regular and honors. You will notice for an A, you get four or 4.5 more points for an honors or four for a regular. And as you go, you can see the list as you go down. If they fail a class, they will not get any mark points. They will not get a credit. So no matter what level they're on, um, they won't get a credit or won't get a mark point. Um, advanced placement will not start. There is one class their sophomore year, and that's mainly junior, senior years that students will have an opportunity to do advanced placement. And grade point average is some, uh, cumulative over the whole um, high school career. It is on a four point scale. Of course, if you have some honors classes or AP classes and you do well, you could have higher than a 4.0, you could have 4.2. The reason these GPAs are important is for colleges, for admissions, to get into university scholarships. Um, sometimes a good um, student credit for, for um, your license. So, um, Grade point average is something that we need. It's kind of a snapshot of how you do at school. So, Ms. Chris, you wanna talk about um, the freshman teams? Yes, thank you. Um, our freshman year, we want to support students as much as possible. We really want to have that transition be very successful from the eighth grade year into high school because high school can be kind of a scary, scary big place. Um, what we do is we separate our freshmen into teams. And our, we have four teams at the freshman level. We have Team Atlas, Team Cronus, Team Prometheus, and Team Sticks. We do have a brand new freshman wing that just opened this year. And it is really cool because each of the freshman core classes are in its own little pod with a super cool collaboration zone in the middle. So freshman teaming, it's awesome because students really get to know their teachers and vice versa. And we can provide additional academic support, behavior support, interventions for those students at an earlier time. Um, not only is it really fun um, or is it really important for the academic and behavior support, but we also like to have a ton of fun on these freshman teams. Um, students take ownership over their teams and we do what's called a freshman cup at the um, throughout the school year. We have several team competitions. We do an outside freshman teams ropes course and we just have a lot of fun and really build that camaraderie among teams. Um, the last two years, Team Atlas has won the Freshman Cup, and I know that all the other teams are just waiting to um, take Team Atlas down. So sorry, Team Atlas, I love you, but the teams are coming for you. So I did talk about through these freshman teams, we do provide a lot of academic support. One way we support students is from that eighth to ninth grade year transition. And that's with a program called Next Step Prep, which is offered through our summer school program. And I will talk about that here in just a little bit in another slide. Um, we also have homework recovery. So if a student is not turning in homework, um, they do get a assigned detention. And basically it's to um, for students to complete that homework and get it turned in in a timely manner. Um, and we can talk a little bit more about that as we transition into high school. We also have night schools for students where they can get peer support. We've got some of our National Honor Society um, members come in and they'll do some tutoring for English, math, Spanish, whatever students may need. We also have success study halls, which is a more, um, it's a study hall, but with more of a one-to-one -one support with the teacher in a much smaller environment. And all of our teachers have office hours before school, after school, and during Titan time. So here's our daily schedule here at Papillion La Vista South. We run on a seven period day with four lunches and a Titan time. The schedule is from 8 a.m. to 3.20 p.m. 
Um, usually students come about 745. We're really asking to drop off students as late as possible um, while still being here on time due to the COVID restrictions um, placed currently in the building. Um, we do have a late start Wednesday and on Wednesdays we do start school at 820 and that is for our departments to have some TLT times to get together and to collaborate um, and to have kind of that sacred secure time to ensure that we're doing everything we need to give your students the best um, academic environment possible. And before school, if your student does come early, what we ask is that all ninth graders go to the cafeteria and we kind of hold them until the bell rings to release them to go to their first hour class. So ninth graders will be in the cafeteria and then our upperclassmen go to different areas of the building as well. Final exams. In high school, students do have final exams and those are very, very important. They will have them at the end of first semester and the end of second semester. Um, we really believe in our final exam schedule. We do not feel like students should have to have all their finals pushed into one day. So we have really taken this final exam schedule, separated out between three days. So students have maximum opportunities to study for each individual final. Um, usually final exam days are a, a little bit of an early release day. Um, so please just be on the lookout for those schedules as they come towards the end of the semester. We also ask that students are not um, un unexcused for final exam days. So if you have any appointments, if you have any vacations coming up, please plan accordingly to this final schedule. Um, we have moved away from class rank here at Papillion La Vista Community Schools, and we are now recognizing students' academic achievement in the Laude recognition method. So this started with the class of 2020, and what this model does is it celebrates academic excellence while um, still giving the students an opportunity to be able to participate in a variety of coursework. So our highest honor is the summa cum laude, and that's what students have a two or 4.25 GPA or higher. The next rank, which is magna cum laude, is with great honor, and then with honor is the cum laude status. So this will be displayed um, through graduation um, with different ropes, and there'll also be some things in the program that signifies this as well. So a lot of parents want to know why why the why the change. Um, it's always been very traditional to rank kids from one to three hundred and have a valid Victorian. So a couple of reasons why is that you know over half the high schools in the um, United States have moved to this method, and because colleges are looking at more than just class rank and more than just GPA. What they really want to do is look at the student overall. They want to see what type of courses they've taken. They want to see test scores. They want to see students who are involved in a variety of activities, not just um, do they have great grades. So there's lots of factors that go into um, college admissions than just your GPA. Um, here at Papillion La Vista South, we are huge on social media. We love social media. We promote our students. We promote our teachers. It's lots of information. So we are on three different platforms of social media. Um, you can like us here on Facebook. And our second form of social media is Twitter. So this is our Facebook. I apologize. <laughs> And then we also have Twitter, and you can follow us on Twitter at PLSHS Titans. And then our third form of social media is the Instagram. I know a lot of students follow us on Instagram, and they love seeing their classmates and their teachers um, on Instagram as well. So uh, very similar to our Twitter account, it's PLSHS Titans. Um, I did say I'd spend just a couple of seconds real quick talking about our next step prep summer program. So what this is, is this is a program for eighth graders transitioning into ninth grade. What we would do is we recommend students take this course if they have difficulties with organization, if they have difficulties with transition, if they've got some um, specific behavior or academic needs. So we ask those are the type of students that come into um, this program. We focus uh, mostly on math skills, English skills, and then they'll have time to meet club sponsors, meet our staff, and really just get a really good feel of the building before they even step into it on their very first day of freshman year. Next Step Prep and Summer School will run June 1st through June 18th. So if this is an opportunity you are um, interested in, please reach out to either myself, Ms. Segu, or one of your counselors, and we can get that process started. Ms. Segu, do you, you wanna talk a little bit about registration? Yes, absolutely. 
Registration, you will have, um, your student will be bringing home um, registration materials. If you are a remote parent, you will be, that will be sent out through your teacher, your remote teacher um, that your student has. Um, it's, it's just important that we get this registration. Who knows what next year is gonna look like, but we need to get them into classes. We need to get them all ready for high school. So um, really when we're filling out the registration, our goal is to challenge our students, but don't run them ragged. Don't totally um, work them so hard that they can't be successful in every, every area. You wanna make sure you have a balance between academics and extracurricular. Um, we want to keep the momentum ready so they're ready for the next level, be it college, uh, military, maybe it's going into the workforce. Um, we want to make sure we have a schedule that's good that's going to help us get to those goals. Okay, the process, the forms will be due February 17th to the student's Eagle's Nest or Titan Time teacher. If you are a remote student, you will be receiving a mailing that tells you how you how you turn those into me. So we're kind of going to talk about all those areas. Um, but the 17th is the deadline. The forms must have a parent signature. I ask that you print your name neatly and also include a, um, a phone number, a, a daytime phone number, so that I have your phone number right there in front if I have any questions. So please make sure that you have that down. I ask that the students be on time. Now, if they are late, I may have to write the word late on it. And how that might affect your student is if we have a full class and we don't have any space for your, I'll have to go through and see who was late and we'll take them out and put the alternate class in. So we just ask that we have this be a smooth process so that we know how many teachers we need, how many sections we need. It's, all, it's a bigger picture of, of um, hiring and, and all of that. Okay, the parochial students, if you are a parochial student or if you're a transfer student from like the other high school or whatever, um, you will probably get a hold of my secretary, Miss Maybe. She'll call into the school and make an appointment. I will not be accepting appointments until after March 1st. That kind of allows me to be able to get students settled from the, the two middle schools. Now, saying that, you will have an equal opportunity to get the classes that you want. So please know that that's not gonna be an issue. Um, but I'd like to have a meeting with you if we can in person. I don't know if that's gonna be allowed this year, but I would love to have that. Um, but those two groups of students will have an opportunity to get into classes that they need. Class selection, you will notice on the school website that there is a registration materials, there will be a course registration guide. You will want to use that um, to pick the classes. That's a great thing that has a list of all the different classes. It has a lot of good information for college at the beginning, the first 15 pages. But then after that, it has each of the courses. It tells what the course number is. It tells how long it is. Um, and any prerequisites, mu what must be done before you can take that class. Okay, we often have questions about what's the difference between honors and gen general. I know at the middle schools, you don't have that opportunity. If your student is doing really well in classes, they have a B or, high, or A, 90% or higher, you may wanna consider taking an honors class. Um, a good person to talk to is your, your current teacher in that level ask them what their opinion, they've seen them, how they're doing, how they're doing, um, getting into getting their assignments done. So they will be a great resource for you. Um, let's say you're remote and your students having a hard time getting on, that might be an indication that we're not quite ready for an honors class. So we can always get into honors down the road, but we want them to be successful in the class that they are taking. Now, one of the things you will have signatures for any honors class or, or Spanish too. Um, now I know the remote students will not be able to have the um, signature, but please communicate with the teacher. You'll be writing them the teacher's name so I know who to communicate with or who to talk to if I have questions. I do wanna point out that we do have English. We have a summer reading requirement. The goal is to continue to read, to read for pleasure over the summer. The two books that are going to be read is The Hobbit for the honors class and The Bruiser 
for the regular English class. Now, we ask that the students follow the instructions on what is required of them, if it's going to be doing notes or if it's going to be coming in and making sure that you're ready, you've read it so that you can do a comprehensive quiz or do some kind of writing with it. Um, the cool thing is, is the teachers will kind of relate it to, oh, remember in Bruiser when this theme was happening, how does that relate to this book? So it's just to get kids, keep the cobwebs out, keep them reading, keep them engaged. Okay, as for uh, math, you'll here are some things you might want to consider. Um, do you, what is your goal? Is college a goal? Um, do we need to retake? Let's say you're taking algebra at the junior high level and you're kind of struggling and it's not going very well. This is an opportunity for you to retake that class if your teacher recommends it. Um, people don't know that you took it in middle school. So it will help you to have a strong foundation because every one of our classes is based on algebra. So make sure that you're signing up for the right math, math class. Um, You'll see the sequence of classes. So you can take a look at that on, oh, if I take this class, how can I get to the level that I would need to get to for college? World languages. Yes, we have world languages. I do want to point out, it is not a require for, requirement for graduation. However, for most university four-year colleges need you to have two years of the same language. Now, those of you that are in Spanish one at the eighth grade level. If you sign up for Spanish two, then um, on your transcript, we will only have Spanish two on there. However, they see that you did well, colleges are gonna see, oh yeah, I bet they had Spanish one in, in eighth grade. So that's gonna count as the two year requirement for colleges. Um, it's just, that's, we just don't record them onto our transcripts, but they'll count it as two years. If you are not, I mean, I would suggest talk to your English teacher. If you're having a hard time with the English language, it might be a difficult time for you to take your world language at the freshman level. Since you only need two years, you can always take it your sophomore, junior year and kind of get some more skills under your belt before you tackle a, a world language class. Okay, the worksheet that they'll be filling out, they'll be filling out two semesters of English, two semesters of science, two semesters of social studies, and two semesters of math. I encourage them to get into a PE class. I almost recommend getting into two PE classes. And the reason I suggest getting two of them done your freshman year is oftentimes down the road, you're gonna have many, many more choices. There's gonna be um, academies that they can take. And I would really hate for them to say, oh, I can't do that academy because I haven't done my PE classes. So get your PE classes in there. You need to have intro to PE and health for um, graduation. If you do not have that class, you will not graduate. So I can encourage you to get that into your schedule for sure. What that class is six weeks of cardio, six weeks of strength and six weeks of health. That does the health requirement for the state. And then you'll fill out your schedule either with electives and intervention classes if your teachers are recommending, or you can put in a study hall for one or both semesters. I do wanna point out, you are not filling in which semester and which order your classes are. It's going to be, you're just filling in spots and the computer will figure out what the schedule will be. Make sure that your student puts in alternate courses because you do not want me just saying, oh, there's space in this class. I would rather look to see if I can't get something that I'd rather look to see, oh, what's their interest and what class would they be open to? So do pay attention to that and fill that in. Okay, here's the registration sheet. You will notice up here, I don't think you can see it, but at the top there is, um, often you will have a label that is filled out for you. On the right hand side, it says me moving. If you think you might be moving, go ahead and um, circle moving. Um, and that just lets me know that, hey, we might be getting some information from the new school. I do need you to fill out this form anyway. Even if you're moving or not, do fill it out because sometimes the college or the high schools will call me and say, hey, what was this student signed up for your school? And I can kind of help with that transition. So. You will fill out the English, math, science, social studies. And the way you do that is you circle the number and the word. So if you wanted LA09 English, you would circle all of that. Math, you're gonna write down the, the number and then you can just do an arrow because every one of our math classes is a year class. And then there's spots for each of the, um, the signatures that you need for honors classes. Um, 
I do want to point out with Spanish too, we are asking if you sign up for Spanish too, we'd like you to have your teacher sign it saying that yes, you are ready to go on to, or you are ready to go on to Spanish two from Spanish one. Underneath that, you will see those are our support classes. We have some great support classes that help students that maybe struggle a little bit in math or struggle a little bit with reading. And we have teachers, case managers, counselors, people that sign these up or sign students say, hey, we really recommend they have this. Um, you will actually get that signature if your student says yes, if your teacher says, yes, you need to have algebra support, you will want to put it into your schedule um, because if you don't, I'll put it in. So um, make sure that you get that in. Um, we just want students to be successful. I'll tell you with that, the FAME reading class or the study skills class, that is a great class. Some people really need a little extra help because the reading gets a little more difficult as we go through the years. And if it's a struggle, it's going to be, it's going to be a rough rough couple years. So get the knowledge and get the skills under your belt. Underneath that, we have the alternate courses. Like I said, please, please, please sign alternate classes because you don't want me to pick your, pick your extra classes or your classes that fit into your schedule. You, we want what you want, what you're interested in. Then students will sign it and then they have an option to put their phone number in. Chances are I probably won't call their phone number if they do because they don't answer anyway. If they don't have a phone, this is not a reason to go out and buy them a phone. Just put a line through it that I don't have a phone. And I do want parent signature and also print your name and also a, um, a good daytime phone number so I can use that number to um, call you back um, when I'm entering these. You will see the deadlines are February 17th to both the Eagle's Nest and also the Titan Time and the remote students. You will get in the mailing, you will get information on three different ways to get the registration sheet to me. You can email it to me, you can scan it to me, take a picture of it, um, you can mail it, you can actually call me, mom can call me or dad can call me with the registration sheet in front of them and I can take down um, that information and get them entered into classes. I just ask that, you know, if you leave a message, please be patient because um, we're working on freshman students now and also the incoming freshmen. So just be patient with me and I'll get back to you when I can. And I did put down, you know, our contact information. If you have any questions, please feel free just to reach out to either Ms. Prusha or myself. We did, I did give the email, so you can always email us if you have any questions. We want to be there to help you out. We want to make this transition an amazing transition. This is a great place to be. We have great students and great um, staff members, and we're just excited to hopefully get back to a, a regular school year. But who knows? Like Ms. Ms. said, we are just over the moon to have you guys here at Papillion La Vista South next year. Um, our facilities are honestly top notch. We just um, renovated the four corners of our building. We have a brand new freshman wing. We have a new PE classroom, a new um, skills and technical trades area, kind of our STEM area. And then we've also added on to our cafeteria and um, the front of our building in a little bit. So I am so excited to be the very first person to welcome you to, to Papillion La Vista South. Um, like Ms. Agu said, if you or your parents have any questions at any time, please don't hesitate to pick up a phone, send us an e email, and um, we look forward to meeting you all very soon. Thank you.